Today, I'm going to be talking about predicting outcomes in inflammatory bowel disease. IBD consists of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. These are chronic, lifelong conditions that mostly start in young people, but because they are incurable, they have significant impact on an individual's life throughout the disease course. And indeed, they can occur at any age throughout life. They typically affect people causing diarrhea, bleeding, bloating, pain, sickness, weight loss, significant fatigue, but also other psychosocial problems such as anxiety, depression, and low mood are common effects. We have seen very striking epidemiological trends in the last 100 years. In the first half of the 20th century, IBD starts to emerge in the Western world, in Northern and Western Europe and North America. Over the last 20 or 30 years, we see IBD now emerging in newly industrialized countries, such as Japan, the Far East, South America, and the Indian subcontinent. And this is occurring as these countries adopt a Western lifestyle. It's very clearly associated with urbanization, and a lot of thought has gone into the effect of the environment, including Western food. If we look in Edinburgh and also in Canada, we can see from recent data published from our group and that of Gil Kaplan in 2019, that the current prevalence of IBD in the Western world is between 0.7 and 0.8. That means that approximately one in 125 people is affected or is living with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Now, due to the phenomenon of compounding prevalence, that is that we diagnose five times more people each year than people die from inflammatory bowel disease, we are seeing the rate or the prevalence of IBD going up, such that within a decade, we have estimated that it will surpass 1% of the population. That provides a very real problem for us as we manage our services. And across the world, the trends are very, very clear. The incidence of IBD in the West is stable, but the prevalence goes up. But in the rest of the world, there is a catch up going on as the incidence increases year on year. So it is no exaggeration to say that IBD is already a global pandemic, but it is going to increase further over the next 10, 20 and 30 years. And this is a very real problem because unfortunately we have the taps on at both ends. We don't know how to cure the disease, nor do we know how to prevent it. So we have a lot of work to do to try and help address this situation as time goes on. Now, it's very clear that there are environmental influences at play. I've mentioned diet already, and I will come back to that later, but there are other environmental factors, industrial pollution, food additives, hygiene, antibiotics and other medicines, surgery, smoking, stress, exercise, geography and travel, um, and perhaps even sunlight and vitamin D. And so we need to try and understand how they influence two things. First, the onset of disease or the cause of disease. We call that the etiology. And second, disease course, how these things affect what happens to an individual once they develop IBD. Now, why is this important? Well, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis represent very heterogeneous phenotypes. No two people are alike in any aspect of their life, but that is no more true than in IBD. Some people will have a relatively mild or quiescent disease course. Others will have a very aggressive disease course, unfortunately, leading to multiple hospitalizations, a, a progression of the disease from inflammation to stricturing and penetrating or fistulizing complications, resistance or toxicity from our common drug therapies, and then as a result, the need for operations um, with resections of portions of bowel over time. And in the worst case scenarios, that will result in people needing to be drip fed through a vein with TPN or parenteral nutrition over time. So this is a very, very wide spectrum. And at its core, the problem that we have today as clinicians, as nursing teams, um, and for the patients themselves, is that at pretty much every aspect of the disease journey, we lack predictive power. What would help us enormously would be able to predict Who's going to get inflammatory bowel disease? Who needs what treatment at the start? Who we need to monitor in what way? Who is at risk of being hospitalized? Who is at risk of an operation? Who's at risk of complications of therapy? Perhaps even of cancer, of infection, and ultimately of death. 
So these are very real problems we face today. And in the current era, an era of big data, an era of digital health, an era of machine learning and artificial intelligence, these are now problems that we can start to tackle with a real hope and an expectation that we can make a significant impact for everyone today.